because I'm me, like my grandmother could sew by hand better than a sewing machine. Oh she my never gosh. taught me how to do one stitch. I inherited that. Nice. So, I have two topics today. The first one I'm going to talk about is using crystals for personal transformation. I have been using crystals for more than artwork since the 1980s. I began to be very interested in them because I took a trip out to Colorado and at the time I lived in Georgia and Georgia is a state where you can go dig for your own stuff and there's all kinds of stuff. I have been known to be in the ditch digging with mud all over me and a big smile because I have been finding quartz and there's many other things as well, especially up in the mountains. Uh, there's There were stones, and so this is their home first. So their amount of knowledge and wisdom is far greater than ours. Now, how do you tap into a stone? Because most people were thinking, you're crazy. <laughs> and people have thought that a lot. But <laughs> Did you tell them to are, kiss your foot? There are so many of us that we talk to our stones and we receive help from them. So I have brought something that I use every day. This is a little tin somebody gave me and I have nine stones in here. And we'll get to that shortly because we're going to make this a interactive experience. When you are going to try and transform, you need to have a safe place to start working. Some place where the energy is calm, some place where you're not going to be disturbed and that you are protected from the whirlwind. All you have to do is look at I-4 at rush hour malfunction junction over here <laughs> every morning. There is, you know, something that either on 75 or I-4 and it backs it up and it takes an hour or two to untangle that. And just the tension of that being in the area is just, it's hard to not take the stress on. So we can work with stones to help us to, to protect us because of steel. My melody and it's a hundred dollars for this book and I haven't got it memorized and I have several books I like to work with the stones myself because they will talk to you directly and you make friends with your stones and your stones will work with you they will give you calming you have to work with your chakra system your energy body and realize we have within our physical form some things similar to stones. They're called bones, teeth, made out of calcium. We've got iron in our blood. That's a metal. That's why we resonate to each other. So the very first thing that we need to do to have a calm place is, and we're going to work with stones, we need to cleanse the stones. All right? I keep these in here, and these are sacred cloths that have been blessed. This is an Apache tear. It's a piece of obsidian. Obsidian is volcanic in nature. It's actually glass that was spit out by a volcano. And when it went, it went up into the air, and it made these little blobs that then fell down and hit the sand, which is why. And this one I particularly like. You want to pass that one around? It's got a heart on it. That's what I think. Mother see, Nature think. made that, and I'm supposed to be Mother Nature today. Oh, Mother yeah. Nature put that heart on that rock. So this you set of stones, I guess. there are nine of them, and the one that goes in the center is the most important. In your physical form, the center of your body, 
is you've got two centers, but your heart is what keeps your whole body going. So your heart chakra right here over the physical heart, but in the, the exact center of the body, is similar to having the stone that goes in the center of a layout of stones. Obsidian also, as you will look at it, it's black, it's volcanic glass. Anybody ever heard of the Aztecs? Mm -hmm. These were not little poofy guys, were they? <laughs> they were pretty mean. They made their weapons out of this. And when you cut it, like the caveman used to with flint, and he was making, you know, spearheads and things, you cut this and the edge is one molecule wide. This is sharper than any metal. And surgeons today use flakes of obsidian to do heart surgery and stuff. So that's, that's a use of this stone. And it's volcanic glass made by Mother Nature. And man has found all these things and adapts them to his use in different ways. For a spiritual use, one of the things you can do is look at the color of any stone because some stones come in many colors, like fluorite, for example, the whole rainbow. And my favorite is the, the two-tone one. It's called watermelon because it's green on the outside and pink in the middle, just like a watermelon. <laughs> so what kind of energy does that have? That's heart chakra energy because the pink for the love energy, and then the green because the heart chakra is a green color. So, getting back to this, to cleanse stones. Does anybody work with stones here? Okay. What do you do to clean your stones? I think it's hot water. I put them out under the moon. Excellent way. Whole moon. How do you cleanse yours? Whole moon. Whole moon. Okay. I smudge mine. All right. We have incense. You can use sage. You can use regular incense. You can use a bell because sound will oh, clear. The sound will clear, like even these little teeny Tinkerbell looking bells, she, oh, ta da <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right here. There you go. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a fairy bell. I didn't hear that, but she did. Okay, but it can clear the energies. And also, sun, leaving them in the sun, but you want to be careful. For example, you don't want to leave amethyst in the sun because it will fade. There, you have to look that up and find out which ones I've will. The moon never fades. Right. Okay. I need a piece of amethyst. Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. 